So here's photo one in layer one, and here's photo two in layer two. We want AI to create a bridge between these photos. But before we do that, for best results, match the lighting. Have a look at it. The lighting is coming from the right hand side in this mountain. But in this mountain, the light is coming from the left hand side. So let's flip it. Select photo two, press control or command T, right click on it, and then choose flip horizontal. Now to fill it, press control or command A to select all, and then subtract these areas. How do we do that? Select the rectangular marquee tool right there, hold the alt key or the option key to turn it to minus, and then let's Let's take away these areas. Leave a little bit of the meat for the AI to grab upon. There you go. And simply click on generate a fill. We're going to leave it blank. Click on generate. As you can see, it did a terrible job. If you look at all the options, first one, second one, third one, because the sky right here was white. Let's go back to how it was right here. Let's also add the sky to the filling. So with the rectangular marquee tool, this time we will hold the shift key to add to the fill. Let's fill up the sky and now let's try generate a fill one more time. There you go. Much better than before. First option, second option and third one. This is just amazing. Maybe I will make a selection right here and fill up that area again. But apart from that, that's how to combine photos with AI. Before we move forward, just a little bit of housekeeping. Generator Fill is available only in Photoshop Beta at the moment of recording this video. And you can get it by opening your Creative Cloud desktop app going to beta apps right here and installing Photoshop beta right here. You'll see the install button. Just get it. For some reason, if your generator fill is deactivated or if the button is grayed out or you cannot see it, here's troubleshooting. So I put together this list of five things that if you're not seeing the generator fill features in your beta, these are the things you need to try. Go through it if you're having issues. And thanks to Terry White from Adobe for putting this up. He has incredible content on generative AI as well. So please do check it out on his YouTube channel. By the way, if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop and you really want to try generative fill, you can go to Adobe Firefly web right here. I'll leave a link in the description and just click on generative fill and you can try it online. You can erase from here. You can change the background by clicking right here and then maybe just type forest. And there you go. We have a lighthouse in the forest. Absolutely practical. So let's say you want to upload it to Instagram, but you don't want to crop anything. So press C for the crop tool. Select square from right here aspect ratio. Hold the alt key or the option key and just expand it just like this. So with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to make a selection at the top. Leave a little bit of the meat. Get into the meat of it. Tofu of it. And click on generate a fill. Click on generate again. By the way, if you're not able to see the bar, not the bar that you're thinking about, the contextual taskbar, go to window and then scroll down and make sure that contextual taskbar is selected. Have a look at the options. So here's the first one. This looks a little odd. Here's the second one. That is amazing. Here's the third one. If you're not satisfied, you can always generate again or try some prompts. This is much better. And that's how you expand images. What a beautiful image. But we wonder, what if someone or something else was carrying her? For it, let's make a selection of the thing you want to remove or modify. Now you can take the time to make your selection. I have already done it and saved it in channel. So let me quickly load that. And now let's fill it with maybe a chimpanzee. Click on generate. That's not bad. Look at the lighting. It's matching so much. First, second, that's good. Here's the third. Wow, what is he wearing? Teletubbies. The eyes are a little off. So let's make a selection around the face right here. Click on generate a fill and chimpanzee face. Not too bad, not too bad. First one, second one, third one. Um, Second one is okay. And there you go. Isn't that an interesting image? Now it is hard to decide who to remove. I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. But I'm really jealous of this guy. So um, let's do that. Make a selection around him. And you don't have to fill anything. Generate a fill. Click on that and generate. There you go. Our wishes are fulfilled. Here's the first one. Here's this. Oh, that's nice. The hand is messed up though. Here's this third one. Seriously, the hand is messed up again. We do need to do a couple of trials till the hand is conveniently inside the pocket or outside the frame. So right in here, here's the final result. Here's the before and here is the after. Have a look at the hand. It's outside the frame. We need to work on that, but that's pretty cool. This is such a beautiful image, but the photographer thought maybe the lens flare would be cool. But uh, to me, it maybe is a distraction. Make a selection around it and also make sure to leave a little bit of the meat or tofu if you're vegetarian for the AI to not leave edges. So click on generate a fill, click on generate. Now replicating this entire pattern right here, reversed, it's a hard thing to do. But the AI has incredibly done an incredible job. First, second, and third. You can go with either of those and have a look at it. Removed. Here's the before and here's the after. Let's change the red under thing that he's wearing into a formal shirt. Formal shirt. 
generate. And it has done a pretty good job. First one, second one. Oh, that's nice. Third one. The lighting is just impeccable. There are a couple of areas we need to work on. But apart from that, this is just this just works. Now, this can be a very fun project to try. You can just keep on expanding an image and keep going and see how that goes. So simply press C for the crop tool and let's expand it a little bit. Hit OK. Control or Command A to select all. And with the rectangular marquee tool, hold the Alt key of the Option key and subtract this area. And fill up the outside areas with a generative fill. And keep on doing that and see what opens up. So here's the first one, the second one, the third one. All of them are nice. Once you pick one, do it again. Press C again, expand it again, and Control or Command A. Take the rectangular marquee tool and subtract this area. Leave a little gap. Click on generative fill one more time. Keep doing it. Just be cautious of your file size. It will get humongous before you know it. So here is something that I already did and here's the result. So here's the first one, second, third, fourth and fifth. Crazy. No hair, no worries. Generate a fill to the rescue if you want the hair. So right here, give it enough space for the AI to work on and then type in what you want. Here, I want a bit of flowing hair. Click on generate. Oh, that's nice. It looks like mine, but better. Here's the first one, second one, third one. Pretty good styles and that uh, suits him. This one suits him too. Now you can keep on generating all different kinds of hair and that's how to add hair. So this is a photo I took in Las Vegas. It was very hard to find an empty space. There was always somebody coming and before they start calling me a creep and kick me out, this is the best I could do. Let's make a selection around it and click on generate a fill. And also don't forget to select the reflections. That's important. We don't want them to be ghosts. Do you say ghost or ghost? Let me know in the comments. That's good. That's good. Not the best, but that's okay. Here's the second one. That's even better. Here's the third one. I think we can go with the second one. So let's say you want to change the grass in the background to sand. Now, when you do select the background, make sure you select all of the grass as well. If there's a shadow of the grass on the body, select that. If there's grass livers right here, select that. And leave a little space for the AI to remove all of them properly. So here we have a selection of the background and I'm just going to type in sand right here. Click on generate. Look at the kind of carving it has created for him to lay in. The second one. That's amazing. Here's the third one. Let's go with the second one. Look, it has also created the shadow of his arm right here. This is just brilliant. Guys, if you plan on surprising a woman with jewelry, uh, chances are that you're going to mess up. Maybe she'll not like the design, the color, the size, the fitting. There's going to be something and she might not say it to you. It's always best to take her to the store, tell her what you're willing to spend and let her choose. Trust me, they'll do a better job. This happens most of the time, not all of the time. And with that said, let's add some jewelry to her. Please don't judge me. So let's make a selection. And I think with this dress, a pearl necklace would go nice. Pearl necklace. Generate. There you go. It just looks fantastic. I also did some earrings. When I tried to do the nose rings, Adobe kind of messed up. No studs. It just didn't get right. So here are the results. So here's one. Here's the other one. As you can see, no stud. Adobe thinks this is a no stud and Adobe also thinks Adobe AI, generator fill AI. This is a no stud. And when I tried nose ring, it just stuck a ring on her face, but it's looking realistic. Here's the other one. Here's the other one. Uh, well, I'm hoping this will be fixed in the future. We are removing braces today. This was a superbly hard thing to do. You had to take the brush, take a sample and slowly and gradually paint. Aaron Nace, the OG of Photoshop has a video on that. Do watch it after this video. Generative fill does make it easier as a starting point, but you do need that painting technique to fill up those artifacts. So definitely check out this video if you're into it. Aaron Nace, you are amazing. Once you have a selection, we're going to type in teeth. This is such a wonderful result, isn't it? I'm just blown away. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. Come on. All right, let's try teeth. No braces. Generate. How did Venom get in there? Anyway, the second one is nice. That is, okay, now this Colgate. The second one, go for it. And you can fix these little areas. But apart from that, this is amazing. Similarly, you can use the same technique to remove the glasses before, after. Now let's go a little extreme with this image. What if we set up this castle in the middle of the lake or in the middle of the sea? So let's make a selection around it like this. And maybe leave out this area. Let's see how good or bad the reflection is. Lake it is, click on generate. Because the reflections are a little better on the lake than the sea. Wow, that is indeed good. Look at the reflection, that's pretty cool. And also it perfectly made a reflection of the castle. That's amazing. I remember doing a 30 minute video to create a reflection using 3D. And even that was not very realistic. And 
look where we have come. So let's say this is a composite you created. Here's the background. On top of that, we have the subject and on top of that, some color grading, global color grading. Now, shadows are an issue. It takes a lot of time to paint them. So why don't we generate it? So with the lasso tool selected, make a selection of the areas where the shadows would be. Now the legs would be new, the feet would be new, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice right here and click on generate a fill. Generate again. All right, that is literally the opposite of what we wanted. Let's do that one more time. After a couple of tries, this looks pretty darn cool. So we can work with that or generate a few more times with different prompts maybe but that's how to create shadows in compositing with generative fill so in this case the sky is a little plain so let's go to select and sky yes there's an ai feature that does that too now let's fill it up with a dramatic sky click on generate that's not bad the light is coming in from right here and there's a little brightness here's the second one that's also good the third one it's also changing the mountains, by the way. So that's how to absolutely replace skies without even having to worry about color matching. If you open up a blank canvas, you can generate an entire image. Press Ctrl or Command A, and now you can use Generate a Fill. But again, I'm too lazy to type in a prompt. So I'm gonna use ChatGPT to create a random AI prompt to generate a beautiful image. Let's see what it does. Create a stunning image that, oh, whatever that is, let's copy it. Here in Photoshop, go to Generate a Fill and paste the same thing. Yes, we got the whole thing. Click on generate. Done. Beautiful, incredible, and it's just out of this world. Now you can generate a rainbow, but you have to know that this has been a bit of a failed attempt for me. Maybe I need to make some improvements. Let me know in the comments. I need help on this. So once I made a selection, I tried to generate something and this is what I got, a cartoon rainbow. So people at Adobe told me to try a few times um, and I tried many times. And in all of those times, I got a cartoon. In the case of Rainbow, you know, it is just best to do it manually. Or you can try a couple of times and I'm sure it will get it right. Let's add some muscles to him. Give AI enough space to create the muscles, but leave the hands the way it is. And also, we'll just create a selection like that. Let's type in male bodybuilder. I tried typing just bodybuilder and I cannot tell you the things I generated. That is nice. Look at the lighting. But still, looks like a wax toy with no skin texture. But the lighting, it's good. Now, this is something that we can work with. And there are a couple of areas that we need to fix. And we are both thinking and know the areas that we need to fix. But apart from that, this is good. This is good. This is actually something we can work with. Now, don't make him look like he skipped leg day. So make sure you select these areas and generate bodybuilder legs as well. So I'm gonna leave that to you. Let's move on to a little more practical use case of this. So here's a random street in San Francisco and these power cables, power lines can be distracting. So let's make a selection of all of that and try generative fill. I'm gonna click on generate and after a couple of tries, here's the result I got, which is just incredible. Now there are a couple of areas we can fix. Right here we have this trail, create a new layer. You can try the new remove tool and just paint over it. That is gone. By the way, here's a full video on the remove tool. Now, since Taylor Swift just broke up, I took her to a restaurant to cheer her up. And the only way I could do that was generate a fill. So here's how I did it. So here, my friend, you have the original image. I placed myself on top of this man right here. Now, we do need to know color matching techniques. And that is why whenever AI comes or whatever happens, learning the manual techniques are essential. And that is how I created all of these curves adjustment layers and hue saturation adjustment layers to match my color and the lighting to the scene. And here's the final Gen AI thing. So to make myself blend with the image, I made a selection around me and gave a little buffer for Taylor Swift's clothes to kind of interact with the edges of my shirt and my arm right here. And this is what I came up with. As you can see, it is interacting pretty well. Now the back area was looking a little off with a lot of AI jargon. So I replaced it. And then this area was looking very off and it made me wear something. So I replaced that. Now it's interacting well. I generated this, the rest of the thing again. Now also, this separates you as a professional. Look at the lighting. It has created this shadow right here, but the shadow on Taylor is not as harsh enough and the direction is different. So I replaced the shadow. Here's the before, here's the after. We will recover the cheeks later, but we had to do that. Now still the shadow didn't have that line, so I generated that little area again. Now I made the shadow darker and these were just for indications. Then I did bring back Taylor's original cheek. And now since the background was distracting, 
we changed it. I took her to her restaurant and I did a lot of other changes, but finally again. Now look at the eyes of Taylor. Don't get distracted by the lack of pixels, but look at the shadows right here. It's not as much as the shadows that I have. So I did dodging and burning. We cannot just leave everything to AI, but then the color was looking off. So I created a color layer trying to fix these discolored areas. So here's the before, here's the after, fix that. And then a lot of contrast stuff, a lot of adjustment layers, and this is our final image. I also removed the shadow from here to match with that of the tailor. Again, here's the before, as you can see, a lot of shadows, Here's the after, removed it. So AI is a tool to help you. It's not a tool to replace you. So there you go. A lot of uses of AI. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to all of these amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?